So good afternoon everyone, this is Josh at Notion Music. There's a technique that I want to talk about today called sequencer overlay. Uh, it's a tool that you can use to change the durations of your notes. You can also work with your velocities on specific notes and uh, take humanization of your scores to a different level. Um, so the first thing that you have to do to be able to use the sequencer overlay function is to hit the tab key on your ASCII keyboard and that brings up a, a cross hybrid version of the uh, uh, notation side of Notion and a piano roll. Essentially what it does is it brings up the durations of your notes, the way that they are and the way that they've been recorded in as MIDI. Uh, any randomization that happens happens at the beginning of the note heads and you can move them uh, the beginnings of notes to an earlier position or to a later position and likewise with the endings of notes you can move them to an earlier position or a later position. The colors that you see here represent the velocity color, I mean the velocity levels uh, with blues being the lightest velocity change and um, the pinks being the loudest velocities and you'll see that I have done that with a lot of different parts or voices of this score. And that segues into the next section of this video where we're going to talk about velocity overdub, essentially affecting your sequencer overlay. Um, there are a few different ways that you can change velocities of your notes. You can do them individually if you'd like to, or you can select measures. And um, I'll show you individually right now. If I want to move the velocity numbers, like I said before, you can double click on the tabs here or the lines and place exactly what you want it to be. It comes in very handy when you know what velocities are being sent for, for your specific dynamics. If pianissimo is uh, 23 and you're playing at uh, mezzo piano, which is around 66, you can bring it down to 23 and you've got the, the dynamic ranges, which is kind of nice to know. But anyway, so you can just type it in or whatever you want to do, type it in, and then you're done, and it's 26. Um, I'll get rid of that. The other thing is um, you can do the same thing with quick keys in the sense that if I'm here and I have these all selected, I can use Alt or Option depending on PC or Mac, and then you press up to go up by 10, down by 10, up by 10. It doesn't matter which way you go. If you place a Shift key on the end of that, you move in increments of 1. Uh, so there you have it. I'll get rid of those. So I'm going to show you how to set those over the course of a passage of music um, using the velocity overdub function, which can be enabled by these two. This this key right here. It's a a button on your transport called velocity overdub. You turn that on, and it highlights the staff that you're affecting. In in grand staffs, it will work in just the top staff or just the bottom staff. It will also work in voices if you change to voice mode 1 or voice mode 2 or through 4. Um, right now I'm doing voice 1 in the top piano part, the treble part. All, all you have to do here is follow along with the rhythm on your uh, MIDI controller. And you can go as fast or slow as you want to. Uh, you can solo tracks if you want to hear a specific one. I personally have the piano soloed in my mixer right now and I'm going to do the piano all by itself and then come back and uh, play it with the rest of the score. I have a pianissimo marking here in the score and it goes up to fortissimo and I have accents and staccatos written on my part so let's just give this a shot. I missed one. Another thing is you can go back and edit. I hit it too lightly and it was too quiet so I didn't like it so I'm going back to the beginning or I believe if you use the mouse you can move to a spot in the score which gets a little bit wonky sometimes if you have tied notes or things that aren't playing from that point like here in the sizzle symbol uh, I don't have anything play playing at this point so you won't hear certain things especially if they're rhythmic it makes it a little more difficult so I usually just go back to the beginning of the measure because you can move back and forth very quickly using the bracket keys um, so, so here we go Now it brings the velocity mapped 
color code up so that you can edit it how you want to. I find this very useful in, in particular when there are, are thick chords and say a harp or um, anything really that have a lot of voicing. You, you Many times when composers are writing they want a particular voice to stick out a little bit more. Um, so you can go through and select individual notes, change the uh, velocities of that particular note and then you end up with uh, a properly voiced chord for playback. Um, it's a little bit more human-like when it's being played, but anyway. So now we have... Okay, and uh, I think what I'm going to do too is uh, bring these down because they never actually really were supposed to come out of pianissimo. So I moved down th by three increments of ten and you get... It's a little bit more like what I was talking about. And now I'll put the bass line in as well. So click on Velocity Overdub. Let's see what happens here. Yep. So it is playing them. I'm just too quiet or something. All right. Velocity Overdub. So there you have it on that. Um, now I said I said I was going to come through and do a couple of violin solos with you here. I've already done them once. Uh, let's listen to these four bars, and then I'll do the second section here, and we'll get it a little bit more realistic, hopefully. <laughs> So, now I'm going to get the second section, the last eight bars of this solo happening. Click Velocity Overdub, and you can go, like I said, as slow as you want. <laughs> MIDI controllers are real strange. It's not responding like I want it to, and it may be because I'm not doing... Yeah individual notes. If you watch my... Uh, Alright. So if we go back and listen to the whole thing now, we can listen to the different humanizations that have occurred now. I want you to pay particular attention to the septuplet that's about to happen here that's slurred into the 16th note. Before it kind of sounded a bit synthy, uh, you put the velocity markings in, straightens it out. So it's a pretty simple little line, but you can make it sound really good. I mean, you know, it was a little bit more boring before, and uh, 
Now this section here, I particularly noticed that last time it's uh, it sounded a lot less synthy when you had the staccato. I mean, the velocity is coming in a lot hotter, and that will happen a lot, especially with fast passages. Just as a tip, fast passages have their time of uh, attack that are in the samples, and if you raise the um, attack time uh, or balance the ta attack time and the velocity time of the samples. Um, you can get better results because the beginnings of the notes will play louder. It happens a lot. Um, anyway, so that's velocity overdub uh, and sequencer overlay. Let us know if you have any questions or comments on the forum. And uh, if you have any trouble with anything, contact tech support at support at notionmusic.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.